that I've always wanted to know. Absolutely. And that was the next thing on my list to talk to you about. And by the way, uh, I've looked at all of your videos uh, since I've reached out and contacted you. Who have you before? Uh, and, and I'm not trying to placate you, uh, but it's obvious that you care about what things sound like and that you give it a fair shake. Um, and again, the reason I reached out to you was because I really, really wanted you to give, uh, get an update on where we are. Uh, you know, based on what we've been through as a company, uh, we have been focusing on the infrastructure of the company and trying to build it from inside out. Very, very shortly, uh, Krell is going to take a little bit of a different stance. You know, we're going to be much more proactive from a marketing perspective and a product development perspective. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that uh, reference amplifier that you mentioned beforehand. But relative to the pricing inquiry, I think that that's what kind of makes us, if there's such a thing as a bargain at the price points that we have, mm -hmm. a bargain. Um, we're not looking at the competition and trying to price ourselves commensurately. What we're doing is we're looking at our true costs, our fully okay. cost. Okay. What it cost us for materials, the bomb, the bill of materials. <laughs> Somebody told me not to use bomb, especially if I'm on an airplane. He said, dude, <laughs> stay bill of materials. <laughs> so the bill of materials, uh, the fully burdened cost relative to our labor and everything else involved. When we look at that, uh, we assign it uh, a, a particular price based on the minimum profit that we need to make to stay in business which is why our 300 watt per channel duo 300 xd is eleven thousand dollars and not 20 or 25 000. right 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 yes yeah i would take and compare our duo 300 xd to pretty much any amplifier on the market at a much much higher price point uh, a little bit of an anecdotal thing. I've been in multiple dealer showrooms uh, before COVID hit internationally. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I had a pair of uh, our, our 575 XD mono blocks, uh, you know, playing on a pair of $200,000 plus speakers at a show. Um, I won't tell you what it is. I don't want to, you know, put, it, but, but the, the person who was in charge of the company or one of the people representative of the company and it was at Capital Audio Fest said, he's never heard them sound better. And we're talking about a pair of $26,000 monoblocks. Right. He said he's had $200,000 amplifiers on them. And in between one of his demos, he could just come over to me and said, I've never heard these sound better. Uh, back at Capital Audio Fest before that, we had two Duo 300 XDs on a pair of 120 or $100,000 plus Wilson Max speakers. Uh, and all the reports I got from that was people were saying they've never heard these speakers sound better. It was amazing. Uh, I got a lot of phone calls. I wasn't at that show, but I got a ton of phone calls saying, oh, my God, that's incredible. Um, so, so anecdotally, that, that's what's happening out there. But pricing wise, uh, it's a formula and it's a okay. formula uh, that enables us to just make enough profit to stay in business. We're not yes. pricing things way out of proportion to match what's on the marketplace. That is why a lot of our partners say that we're kind of the bargains relative to that. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, to your point, $11,000 for 300 watts of pure class A is, is really unheard of. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know of anything like that. I mean, I, I, those, those watts, I mean, to put it into perspective, some of the, the offerings from um, Europe are far more money and they're offering 200 watts, 175 watts in there four times the amount of money, right? So definitely I can see that the, the, the value proposition is there in the performance, you know, there's no, there's no question about it that, you know, that if, knowing what I know about amplifiers, just off the top of my head, it, it is, it, it just, it's a hell of a deal. I mean, to your point, for what you're mm -hmm. getting, for what you're offering, for the power, for, you know, or the, all the innovation that you're putting in 11 grand is, when I think of amplifiers that I've owned, that MSRP for 11 grand, that list is not impressive at all. Let's just leave it. Well, it wouldn't be a great amplifier if it didn't sound amazing. And again, it does. Right. I'm going to prove that to you. We're going to get you something to listen oh, to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I would um, love to. I'll, I'll put it out sure. there. Yeah. Now, you mentioned you talked about the reference amplifier. Yes. Um, COVID put us a bit behind. We've been talking about putting this amplifier out for a while. It's designed. Uh, we're in prototypical. We're in like second, third stage prototypes. Um, uh, so I can hear the amplifier when I do go back to the factory. Um, to, truth be told, uh, since COVID came about, our business went nuts last year. 
Um, you know, we had a, a period from, uh, you know, 2020 when, when COVID hit, uh, you know, through the end of the year where uh, it, it harkened us back to, uh, you know, 2007, 2008 levels of sales, which was really, really good. And 2021 has been pretty good as well. Uh, not as, as good, but still we're growing. Um, uh, so, and unfortunately, what happened is we, we had to take the engineering team <laughs> have them in the production line. That's how that's how crazy it's gotten. Uh, but we're back to it. We're back to it now. Um, we are uh, uh, the amplifier itself uh, has yet another uh, technical improvement that that's major. Uh, another David Goodman uh, discovery. That's um, definitely impressive that you're saying that there is a reference amplifier in the works. I mean, there's a reference a amplifier in the works. It's going to be a 400 watt per channel stereo or 800 watt mono block units. Uh, I don't have pricing on it yet because of the fluctuation of uh, uh, control sure. and shipping and all that stuff. But uh, I've what got about, a ball, but I'm not going to say what it is. Reference uh, preamp by any chance? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The reference preamp will probably follow by a month or two. We are hoping, hoping, we've been hoping to get this out for a while, and we've been talking about it for a while, and I'm sure people are going to be watching this video saying, yeah, yeah, Walt, you've been talking about that's this something, for a long And that's time. the feedback, that's some of the feedback I was going to give you. I have heard that from dealers, that you guys have been holding out for a while now, and uh, the word I've, I've gotten is a little bit of stagnant production right now like uh, people are well there's no that question day. about that we have been holding out for a while but it's been because of two things one yeah, COVID has uh, been yeah. because of the increase of uh, uh you know what we need in terms of putting all, all people on deck to produce what we need to produce uh, in terms of part shortages a whole bunch of things but in reality uh it, it's it, it's it's just been that um you know, we, we were pushed back by this so much that, you know, we talk about it, we talk about it, we need to get it out there, we know we do need to get it out there. Uh, there are some things that I cannot talk about here. Sure, of course. Uh, that assure me uh, that, uh, uh, that, that we will we'll, we'll, we'll be definitely uh, having an announcement uh, by the end of the year uh, that'll put everything into perspective that we've been working on as a company. Yeah, that, that, the, when you the have a company, marketing part, yes. That when you part. Are, the infrastructure part too. Our customer service was crap. Um, it's still not where we need it to be. We want to have white gold service. We hired a gentleman to come in customer service, revamp that, revamp the procedures and service. And we're probably about 40, 45% of the way there, but it's working out much, much better. Uh, some people may still be having some issues. We're trying to fix everything internally because you need to fix things internally before you externally start to do things. So we've been working on our infrastructure. We've been working on our procedures and service, which is about 300% up now. We're on our procedures and manufacturing. We've been working on a business and marketing plan for the better part of 15 months now. And we are ready to execute that plan on day one. And we think we'll be able to announce the execution of that plan and what it entails by the end of the year. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, introduce these reference amplifiers, followed by a reference preamplifier uh, very shortly after that. Uh, uh, we, we have high confidence. Again, there's a major component of this that I can't speak to. Sure, that's yeah. uh, That uh, assures me that we're finally zeroing in on uh, completing what we've been promising for a while. Uh, I'd be happy to share that with you on a personal note without okay. being on, sure. uh, on record. No problem. Yeah, I understood. Um, but, uh, but just can't really talk about that at this particular point in time. You, you know, there is this love that I had for that evolution, the evil series, right? Amplifiers. There was that love that I've always had. And when I saw pictures of this reference amplifier, it gave me a flashback of that somewhat. Uh, looking at it, it doesn't look aesthetically like I met, like I said to the eye bias or to the new Krell. Um, and sometimes, you know, and, and it could be perception too, right? Me meaning when you go back and revisit things that worked out for you at some point in time, right? And you aesthetically kind of like retro, I'll give you a perfect example, the Dodge, Dodge Challenger, right? That retro look of the, everyone loved that muscle car. And that's why Dodge is so successful because of that look, right? Everyone wanted that, but now they have a better engine more efficient, something a lot better than back in the day. And I like the fact that you guys, if indeed this proves to be true and the design ends up looking like what I saw, I think a lot of people are going to be quite shocked. And, and, and it's been 
a minute since I feel Krell has been that high up the ladder with what they have built. I think that the eye bias is excellent, but I think that you guys have so much more internally that you can do to put out something even just to hit home runs with. Does that make sense? Something that can just demolish everybody else. Like, I, and that's, that's why exactly, I said that. That, that, is, that is exactly what these amplifiers intend to do. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and while the current amplifiers uh, don't have the weight and the heft, um, you know, these old amplifiers, uh, you're required to have a couple of horsepower, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we built in the past. Because of the efficiency of the iBias amplifiers, they don't weigh as much, but they certainly deliver good current. I've never sure. heard anybody say a lack of current. Uh, they certainly do plumb the depths of the base like the old Krells do. The difference between that and these reference amplifiers is that these reference amplifiers uh, are really going to uh, exceed anything that we've ever done. So, uh, the, the, amplifier, the amplifier, the uh, amplifier, Jay, undressed without any metal around it, undressed. Okay. The first prototype weighs about 160 pounds. You see, <laughs> <laughs> that's the coil that I know right there. That's the yeah. coil right there that's, that I. Dude, that's without the metal. That's know? what I'm saying. That's, that's the coil that I want to see. The chassis. It, and it does require more heat sinks because we are going to have that amplifier double into four, double into two, and double down into one ohm again. Wow. Um, so, so we understand that. Um, what we have now and the reason that our amps that we have now are so good is because of the price points they hit and what they deliver sonically. It would be remiss of us not to come forth, first off, with a really strong statement of what Krell is capable of doing, that, leading up to the leader in audio engineering, which is why we're gonna put our best foot forward with the reference amplifiers first. And I wish I could tell you a little bit more about this new technology. I, but just, suffice, just suffice to say that when I listen to the prototypes, I have the same shit eating grin on my face that I have right now. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, That's... They're, they're, they're amazing. And what they do, and I'm just going to tell you what the result is, not how we got there. The dynamics of the amplifier are like nothing else I've ever heard. You know how when you're sitting there and you're listening to a great system and it could be whatever cost, and then you tap your fingers on the wood table beside you and you say, wow, that sounds more dynamic than this $100,000, $200,000 system I'm listening to? These amplifiers produce dynamics that are pretty lifelike, right? That's exactly that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's the contrast. I'm a believer in what the you contrast. Guys are. The contrast is amazing. You know, I mean, the flack of a snare drum or a kick drum or whatever. And when I hear, when I first heard the prototype, and David said to me, "Yeah, we need to come up with a name for this new technology," and my, my head was just swimming. I'm like, "Oh my god, this is so different than anything else I've ever heard." And, you know, he does it without interjecting any false crap into the signal path. Uh, there's actually two technologies that he developed that are in these new amplifiers. Uh, and we eventually will trickle them down into our core amplifiers. Of course, yeah. Look, look the proof is in the pudding. Uh, just wanted to kind of set the record straight. We've been working on the infrastructure. Perfect. We've been very, very busy trying to take care of our customers that had issues in the past. We haven't been doing a lot of marketing, but we're very much alive. Our dealers, our distributors definitely believe what we're making now is the best sounding gear ever. The price points are amazing. Um, you know, I, we keep talking about the future and talking about the future. And I know that some the people are going to shake their heads and say, you've been talking about it too long. We have been. We have been. There's no question about it. But it's taking us longer to get to the point where we feel as though our company is stable enough from the inside out to truly move ahead with all of the external initiatives that we want to accomplish, including product development and marketing development. But the plan is completely in place. Completely. Awesome. I definitely look forward to seeing these things and hopefully we get to at least get a glimpse this year, hopefully at some point so that we can all get excited because I think Krill is, you guys are long overdue to do something like this, long overdue. It's been a minute and I'm very excited. Thanks, man. I appreciate the opportunity. And one, one last thing, it's kind of what's, you know, what's really cool about this um, is that people are waiting for us. You know, people, if, if, if this were electro big sound or ABC audio, we yeah. wouldn't be having this conversation at all. Right. right. Um, there are, there's a huge, and, and you guys have a huge following. There's no question about it, but I do believe there's that 
th that those fans that are kind of just waiting like this in the bleacher, sitting down waiting for you guys to just hit one out of the park again, to be all completely excited and thrilled. Um, and, and it just, that excitement that when I think of amplification, it's always been Krell in my head as one of the top brands, right? Uh, and that's why I was so passionate and at the same time, somewhat angry because I know what you guys can do, right? And I, I will tell you, I've assumed the same position quite often. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, we, we, we're, not, we, we're not standing still relative to product development. We've just been standing still in terms of getting it out there into the vernacular uh, because we haven't been ready. And I know I made that point already, uh, but I think we're getting closer to that point. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of people behind us, our distributors, our dealers, our end users are constantly acting as cheerleaders. And I got to tell you, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. I truly, truly Great. do. And man, I appreciate you uh, reaching out to me because uh, no like problem, I said, saw that video. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> we can't be nope. in that. <laughs> we Not a problem, Walter. Uh, definitely. I actually thank you for stepping up to the plate and, and, putting you know your best foot forward and giving me the opportunity here to talk to you for everyone also to know uh, to, to know what you guys are up to what future plans are what your future plans are and to be excited about something new I mean to me that's this is exciting I'm very happy that you got up and you told you raised your hand and said I want to talk to Jay have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him and let him know what we got you know, cooking here in the kitchen for a while now. Um, None of it's going to matter if we can't put it to, to, to paper and get these out. And that's exactly what we've been focusing on. Uh, and as I said, uh, repetitively is, uh, uh, you know, I think we're getting closer to be able to do some wonderful things. And, you know, what we want to do is we want to have a lot of things work in tandem. It's not just about introducing a new amplifier or a new technology. It's also about being able to back that up with the worldwide marketing initiative. Uh, you know, it's about uh, providing our uh, resellers with the tools that they need, you know, in terms of training modules, in terms of technical information, marketing and advertising initiatives and directives, programs to be able to get back on board with us. All of these things that is exactly what we've been working towards. All of these things. If you if you, if you look at our plan relative to marketing, uh, uh, while it still retains targeting audio people and audio files out there, uh, we recognize that uh, you know there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of folks out there that don't know about exceptional quality, high performance audio. For instance, Jay, I've said this a million times. When I was a kid, everybody had a stereo in their living room. Even my grandmother, <laughs> who had plastic on her lampshades and on her sofa, had a stereo in the living room. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, I moved my stereo in and I turned it on and everybody moved into it. And there's generations of people who don't understand that these types of immersive experiences, regardless of what price level you're at, even if you do a little integrated app and a pair of speakers, they don't know this stuff is available. Our mission is not just to introduce new products, but to introduce new audiences to the fact that these immersive experiences are available at multiple levels, not just at the Krell level. So I'm just Great. giving you, I'm giving you a taste of what's coming in terms awesome. of Awesome. Sounds like you have a whole plan together. And I am quite excited here, Walter. Uh, definitely thank you for this opportunity, man. And hopefully we can keep in touch. Uh, and you know you have my email you can continue to reach out to me uh, we can keep it I'd love to like I said I'd love to be able to review, review the XD or whatever you may have for me to try uh, and put them up on my channel and give people an opportunity to hear it um, and uh, and see what goes from there but I'm definitely excited for you guys and, and I'm excited for myself too hopefully I run into one of these reference amplifiers in a, in a future show maybe this year or next year hopefully keeping my fingers crossed that you guys can complete that in a timely manner and that you know it's success uh from that point well you always have an open invitation to come up, come up to connecticut and uh, even before we get the reference amplifiers out there be happy to have you take a listen to the prototype oh that would be uh, you know <laughs> i'm about to get on a plane right now <laughs> you have to tell me I'll, 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 I'll beeline it to the factory and meet you there, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Walter, for your time, man. Really, really has been a great experience talking to you. And I hope you guys continue to do what you have been doing and now elevate it to the 10th degree. That's what I'm hoping for. I want to see it. 
and be able to talk about it and put those monsters in my room and let everyone just hear what you guys are doing there. Okay. Jay, thanks for the opportunity. Thank I you. Really Have a great afternoon. Have a good night. Take care. Bye-bye.